Hey there, Zedcar fans. Nigel here. So I'm in the process of planning out the installation of a Haltech Elite 2500 into my 1973 Datsun 240Z. And as part of that planning process, I've been spending a lot of time with the software, learning how that works. And I've also been doing some bench tests so that I can confirm my understanding before I finalize all the wiring also gives me an opportunity to, uh, you know, to, to get as much of the software configured in advance so that when the ECU and all the wiring is installed in the car, I'm not spending a lot of time fiddling around with the, uh, uh, with the software at that point. So I've been able to test a variety of inputs and outputs, but pretty limited by the fact that I don't have an actual running engine to, to test certain functions, like for example, a tachometer output, or I, I'm also using a pulse width modulated fuel pump driver so that I have variable speed fuel pump control. And that got me wondering if there's a way that I can simulate uh, the crank angle sensor input. So in with my particular application, I'm using a one, uh, six industries reluctor style uh, crank angle sensor input that's uh, driven off the distributor drive shaft so that I'll have full sequential fuel and ignition. Now, that being the case, uh, there's plenty of function generators out there that can generate a, a square wave or a sine wave output, it's just a continuous square sine wave, but with a crank angle sensor where you have a missing tooth, uh, that's not easily done on in most of the readily fairly inexpensive type function generators because I'm not looking to spend a fortune on this. I just want something that's fairly cheap since I'm not going to be using this a whole lot. <clears throat> not uh, not going to be using this a whole lot, but still would, would have some, some value for what I want to do. So that got me digging around online and uh, started looking on AliExpress since there's a pretty incredible variety of uh, all, all sorts of things out there, including uh, automotive diagnostic equipment. And I did actually come across something that can simulate crank angle sensor inputs. Uh, so this little gadget here it's the auto signal generator, the XH-2. So I found this on AliExpress for, uh, I think it was less than 50 bucks, but uh, uh, let's pop over to the AliExpress website and I'll show you exactly what, uh, what I was looking at. And here we are on the AliExpress website for the XH2 auto signal generator. You can see it's currently going for approximately $43 Canadian. I think I paid roughly that amount. Uh, shipping was free and I think it took approximately three weeks to get here. It, in any case, it, it came fairly quickly. There were no issues with, uh, with shipping. so. That was, that was great. Uh, if we just switch over to this page here, you can see that it is capable of generating a sine wave signal and a square wave signal, uh, anywhere from two to 8,000 Hertz. And it's also capable of generating a missing tooth signal, which was what was really key in this case. Uh, and the, the missing tooth is fully configurable. Uh, so you can configure the number of missing teeth and you can figure, configure the pulses between the missing teeth. Uh, so now let's uh, have a look at how you actually configure the generator. Now we're going to take a look at the signal generator operation and configuration. So first off, just looking at the unit itself, we'll go through the various uh, operations on here. So we have a dial here on the bottom right. So this is what's used to adjust the output frequency. 
which you can see displayed on the screen here at the top. Then in the bottom left, we have the push button that's used to select a sine wave or square wave output. The set button is used to cycle between the various output frequencies, uh, along with selecting the missing tooth profile and also for configuring the missing tooth profile. And then these arrow buttons are uh, used for the individual settings for the missing tooth, tooth pulses and number of missing teeth. So to actually select a frequency output, what you do is you turn this dial all the way fully counterclockwise. You'll see the signal out light starts flashing and you'll see two displayed in the screen here. So to toggle between the various output frequencies, you just press and release the set button. So currently it's set to uh, uh, 2000 Hertz output. So there's 3000 Hertz, 4000 Hertz, etc., all the way up to 8000 Hertz output. There are also uh, nine, 10 and 11 output settings available here. Those are all simply zero to 100 Hertz. So I've currently, uh, I'm currently using 2000 Hertz output that will give uh, an RPM output with a crank driven crank angle sensor of uh, up to 10,000 Hertz. So that'll give me the, you know, 6,500 RPM approximately that I'm, I'm looking for. To uh, select the crank angle sensor missing tooth profile, uh, you just make sure that the dial is turned so that you have a, a frequency output greater than two. And then you just, again, press and release the set button to toggle between the missing teeth profiles that you have configured. Uh, so you can see there are several options available in here. I'm using uh, 23 to one. So to show how that's set up, Again, just make sure that your dial's in the, the frequency output range here. And then just press and hold the set button. And now you can see that we're into the configuration for the missing tooth profile. So one thing to be aware of here, which uh, uh, threw me off to start. Uh, so as mentioned, I'm using the 1.6 Industries crank angle sensor, which is a 24 minus one uh, tooth pattern. Uh, so initially I thought when I'm setting this up that I would set this to 24 and then this would be the, the minus one tooth. In actual use, that's not the way it turns out that this works. Uh, you have to set it for the number of pulses bet uh, between the missing teeth, which is what this number is. And then this is the actual number of missing teeth. So this isn't really a, a, a minus uh, for the, the missing tooth count. Uh, that's why I have, even though I have a 24 minus one tooth count, there's 23 pulses between the missing teeth. So that's why this is set to 23. And then I have one missing tooth. So just something to be aware of when you're, when you're configuring this. Uh, in any case, once you're in here, it's very straightforward to set up. So you just use the arrow keys to increase or decrease the uh, the pulses between your missing teeth and then when you want to set the number of missing teeth you just press and release the set button and again just use the arrow keys to increase and decrease the number you can go all the way up to a total of nine missing teeth but i'm using one so we'll leave that set to one then when you're finished all you need to do is press and release the set button and you're back to the uh, frequency output setting. As a final note about configuring this device, uh, there is only one user configurable uh, missing tooth profile. The others that are in here are all fixed. Um, you can do up to a 99 tooth wheel and uh, as already mentioned up to nine missing teeth. Uh, if you want to just do a straight sign or square wave output with no missing teeth, then you would need to set it to the 60 minus zero setting. 
Okay, we're now looking at the Haltech NSP software. And I have my file loaded for my configuration for the uh, Datsun. Uh, as you can see here, I have it set to a generic missing tooth trigger type. And the trigger signal location is set to on cam. Uh, now again, using the, the 1.6 Industries crank angle sensor, which is actually driven off the distributor shaft, but it's functionally equivalent to being on cam. Uh, you'll notice here that the profile is set to 24 teeth with one missing tooth. As mentioned, uh, with regards to the configuration of the auto signal generator, it is different than the way it's configured in the software itself. So as you'll see in the note for uh, the, the Haltech software, it's expecting that you're going to enter the, the total number of teeth, which would include that one missing tooth. So here you set it to 24 with one minus uh, one missing tooth. In the auto signal generator, you set it to the number of pulses between the missing teeth. Again, hopefully that's clear. Uh, then looking down here, so the sensor type, it's a reluctor set to falling edge. So I've got this, uh, the, the signal generator tied into the crank angle sensor input on the Elite 2500 ECU. I'm connected to the ECU, as you can see here, it's uh, showing green. Uh, so right now I've, I've got the RPM set to zero, but if you'll notice the uh, RPM window here, um, as I turn up the dial on the auto signal generator to start generating the pulses, which I'm doing now, you'll see the RPM start to display on uh, the screen here. So uh, doing this off off uh, camera, but I'm, I'm adjusting the knob on the auto signal generator. So you can see I can increase and decrease the RPM at will. And uh, no trigger errors coming up. Uh, well, it does count one, but it's not a repeated error, so nothing to worry about there. And then the main trigger errors, errors, errors screen here does not show any errors. So it's successfully detecting the input and displaying the correct RPM. And I can also use the oscilloscope feature so you can see the actual signal pattern generated here. So this is a live uh, oscilloscope reading of the frequency input and you can see the missing tooth in that profile. So I'm just going to pause this. So if you count all these peaks you'll see that there's 23 peaks followed by the one missing tooth. Uh, if I change the time scale a bit here we can sort of zoom in so to speak. If I run the scope again there you go. Again, you can see, so if you count these teeth uh, or these pulses, you'll see there's 23 with, uh, with the one missing tooth. Um, I can also turn on, that's the trigger input state. So this is what the ECU has interpreted out of these pulses. And that's a demonstration of the auto signal generator providing an input signal to the Haltech. And there you have it. I hope you found this video informative. A uh, couple of notes before we end. First off, keep in mind that this number displayed here is the frequency output, not RPM. So don't look at this number and expect it to align with the RPM reading in your software. I'll try to remember to include a formula in the description for how to convert the frequency into RPM. Uh, the other thing is uh, with regards to power supply for this, so I'm just running this off of a, a simple little 12 volt DC power supply, same supply that I'm using to power the Haltech Elite. Uh, but um, the, the leads on this uh, are alligator clips, so if you want to use this for diagnostic purposes, uh, when the system is installed in the car, you can just 
clip the alligator clips to your battery to get this guy operational. And that's it. That concludes this video. I want to thank everybody very much for sticking around through to the end if you made it this far. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to post them in the comments below. I'd love to see uh, your feedback. Take care and best of luck. Cheers.